Before I begin, I would just like to apologize for delaying this here video. There are mainly two reasons for that. One of them is because I was invited as an MC for my school's orientation. It took a heavy blow in my schedule since we had to practice for that said event. It went well, and uh, I'm slightly famous now. <laughs> Who knew this video series would lead to me being picked as a school MC? Second reason is that this particular project, this particular artwork, took a while since it was huge. This particular drawing took two pages in my sketch pad, which gave me a bit of trouble uh, fitting it my phone since I use my phone to draw, so uh, I had to improvise. That being said, thank you for your patience and back to the video. Hey, what's going on guys? Uh, and Welcome to another episode of Paleofauna, the series where we talk about prehistoric animals that roam the Earth's misty past. Like I said in the previous video, ancient history is not without its oddities, but these oddities may have given rise to the more modern species that we're more familiar with today. We have uh, Bromotherium, which is a probable intermediate species for giraffes. We also have uh, Indohyus, which is a probable intermediate species between both hippos and whales. Now we're going to talk about one probable intermediate species, an intermediate between sea and land. And this intermediate species is probably one of the most important scientific discoveries ever made in, well, this century. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. This here is Tectolic, a species of Sarcopterygian, or lobefin fish, that lived during the late Devonian period some 375 million years ago, 124 million years before the reign of the dinosaurs. Its name, Tiktaalik, means large freshwater fish, which is accurate considering where it lived. More on that later. Its first specimen was unearthed in Ellesmere Island in Nunavut, Canada in 2004. This animal became one of the most important scientific discoveries, as it gives us a clue as to how tetrapods, animals with four limbs, took over the land. Now what makes Tiktaalik so important? It's because it had features that we would expect to find from a fishy animal adapting to a land environment. First off, it had primitive hands, hands that contained tetrapod bones, like a shoulder, an arm, and a wrist. Why would fish have them? Think of it this way. You live in a freshwater environment like a river, estuary, or a lake. The water you live in begins to dry and the nearest water source is a few meters away. If you're a fish, this would be impossible and a death sentence. But if you had the beginnings of hands, then you could go there no problem, just like catfishes and mudskippers today. It also had rib bones indicating primitive lungs that could help it breathe air despite living in an oxygen depleted water. It also had a neck helping it look around the surface with ease. Despite it having tetrapod features, it also had fish features like diamond shaped scales, fish tail, streamlined body shape, and others that make it halfway between water to land. Now to be clear, Tiktaalik is not our direct ancestor. No transitional form is. But they do give us a clue as to what our ancestors may have looked like, possibly even the common ancestor between us and Tiktaalik, and what attributes they may have adapted to traverse the new environment. Evolution does not have an end goal in mind, after all. But Tiktaalik is no doubt one of the evolutionary pioneers from sea to land. Now, I drew Tiktaalik before for an event called October where you have to draw something daily, uh, fitting a theme that is designated to a particular day. And for me, this one sucked since this was uh, rough and rushed. But the newer one, I feel more proud since it has a more dynamic pose and has colors. And speaking of out with the old, in with the new, a recent study concluded that uh, there was an earlier tetrapod species that perfected walking long before Tiktaalik, leading scientists to conclude that Tiktaalik may have been a evolutionary dead end. Which is f sad and... Uh, even then, Tiktaalik may have been an earlier template for early tetrapods. We don't know. And that's the thing about evolution. It doesn't have an end goal, like I said earlier. It tries out every shape, every form, every lineage, 
every route all at once. But nature is cruel, so each experiment may not be successful in the future, which may lead to dead ends. That's sad, but that's life. We gotta do everything we can with what we got. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this new episode. If you enjoy, please like and share this video if you guys want to. And uh, quick spoiler for the next episode. It has a large spine, a large tail, and it's huge. And it lives in Africa. Ciao, guys!